uh, luckily, this topic of this uh, session did not scare you because microbiome structure streaming so it looks complex. Uh, but this, this during this uh, presentation, I would like to show you first of all a uh, very like intro about the uh, introduction about the, what is this about the structure streaming, and uh, focus on the real demo on both like uh, signups and uh, 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 data bricks. So let me let me share first of all slides about the um, micro budgeting structure streaming. Structured is so it was like before it was simple streaming, but starting from I believe uh, Spark free dot something, it's uh, started to be named like structure streaming. Uh, and Databricks versus Microsoft si signups. Uh, I would like to show you the differences and different approach which I used to to implement uh, this this uh, uh, structure streaming within these two uh, lake uh, design tool sets. Uh, so the, the, the overall approach is I will go to a, a like overview and general use case which is applicable. Uh, to, to just use this approach, batch, micro batch, simply what, what is this about? I mean, how we can utilize this approach in uh, all these cases uh, to show the implementation on Databricks and Microsoft signups. Uh, and uh, that is simple uh, after that, the demo, which is going to be based on real um, file, very simple one, just to show how it's going to be pro process uh, over both platforms. Uh, so general use case, I was asked rather to just uh, prepare uh, the topic or the, the, the challenges which you can face uh, to, to decide to implement or not the structure streaming approach. Uh, so I just put like everything what I think is valuable to list here uh, that need we need can be we can be considered such approach to, uh, cover all these uh, um, cases, and uh, looking at that, you can feel that it's like quite a generic. Uh, like Olga mentioned, it's a magic pill. Uh, this structure streaming. I'm not sure it's so so like uh, generic, but yeah, I generally agree that it can be useful for almost all the cases. Uh, either we are going to process data on the batch mode, on the or, or real time mode. Uh, if we need to just integrate multiple sources, we don't we don't want to uh, just set up anything like to control the progress of uh, uh, what kind of files or any events we just uh, upload to the platform. If you want to easily uh, define this uh, medallion architecture, this uh, gold, uh, bronze, uh, silver, and gold layer. Uh, and if you want to just be quite generic in terms of the platform, because uh, this is what I would like to show you. Uh, the specific implementation, which is uh, done by Databricks using D DLT, I mean uh, Delta Life Tables, is very specific, but it's additional like layer on top of uh, on top of uh, structure streaming. But the same uh, time, on the same time after that, I will show you the implementation using pure streaming uh, approach on the signups without any additional layers on top of that. And of course, if you like to, to code in Python, but Scala, Java, because the API is quite flexible. Uh, I used to work with Python, PySpark, um, but if somebody is also familiar with Scala, Java, also it's very easy to, to start with that uh, and just to code, if you like to code, is uh, the best approach to just use it. Uh, and the structure steaming. But this is like a you know, marketing uh, topics, marketing uh, points. What is the structure streaming approach? It, of course, false tolerant, scalable, uh, fast, and so on, so on. Uh, it contains like different APIs, so we can use as I mentioned, Scala, Java, Python, even R. Uh, but the most important is that quarantine like a, some kind of a transaction uh, within process, which is quite unusual uh, on the big data. Uh, and uh, with a combination of Delta Lake storage, you can at least build some quite uh, nice platform 
to have uh, at least guarantee that if, uh, if you are processing something, we know that it's if it's reached the, the final stage, uh, we know it was processed successfully through the, all, the, all the stages. So we have this uh, idea of the checkpoints uh, and the logs, which allows us to just repeat the process if uh, something is going to fail uh, on the beginning or in the middle, or you can even store the data at the end just to be sure that uh, if all the steps uh, were processed successfully, we can only in such a case uh, write down the data. So quite flexible. And even if you are just uh, connecting streaming only with the streaming, like real streaming, which also like, was some idea um, sometime in, in the past, the streaming is only like uh, just to stream data from Kafka, I know, Event Hub, whatever, like uh, real-time sources. Uh, but it's not the case right now. It's much, much, uh, much more generic and can be used also for even batch, typical batch modes. So that, that, that's why the concept, the concept like on initially you can find like a multiple of such graphs or, or, or documentation or presentation about the uh, streaming approach that you have stream tables and bounded, bounded and so on, but you can window, we can just process data uh, in all, in real time. It's, it's true. Uh, but this, uh, it's not it's it's it uh, it's not like a generic case, but it always need to be like that. We can use this uh, structured streaming approach also to design a batch concept, micro batch concept, all no, almost near real time concept, without this any uh, like uh, processing of the tables and bounded tables and so on, just to process the data which just was uploaded or available uh, to our process. Uh, so we can design it and we can also control. So we can easily switch by simple trigger, which I will just cover on the next slide, uh, switch from the batch to micro batch, almost real time. Uh, it doesn't require any code changes. Uh, so standard supported input files are, are listed uh, as here. So text, CSV, JSON, Parquet, Org, and more because we have uh, a lot of additional libraries, which allows us to connect to any of the different source in the same way, like even have Kafka and so on. And output files um, are also listed here, like Parquet, Delta Lake, Text, CSV, JSON, whatever. Uh, we can store the data in the standard way. I'm like uh, quite a fan of Delta Lake storage, even is a was like initially funded by Databricks, but right now it's also available on, on Synapse. Uh, so I also used to use uh, Delta Lake storage, which is like this park on, st on steroids to have like a standard uh, merge, update, delete operation available on big data. Uh, so it's also, we can use this quite modern like combination of the structure streaming approach and Delta Lake at the end to build quite, quite flexible approach without any like this uh, limitation of the standard big data and parquet format. So micro batch concept. This is a concept which I'm following uh, in the last projects. Uh, even there was not like a specific requirement to build uh, any like uh, real time uh, streaming approach. Uh, or it was at least, but only one. Uh, I decided that this approach is quite quite nice to be applied to even batch or, or real time requirements to build like one generic approach uh, to cover all all possible use cases. Uh, so what we uh, have the first the first one uh, that we have uh, the most important we have these triggers and triggers which I will show you on the um, code is something which allows us to, to define how often we are going to uh, process each of the specific uh, stream. So as you can see, by default, we have uh, such triggers available. This, uh, which I will show you on the demo, uh, it's using this um, one micro batch approach. So I mean, once uh, equal true, which allows us to simply uh, execute the, the, um, this micro batch the structure streaming approach and can be orchestrated by external tool. It can be like a job on the data brick. It can be also the, the pipeline on the sign up side. 
uh, that you can just execute and it will discover what kind of a new sources we have and it will process everything at once. The difference about available now is only that this new feature, but it's only available on 3.2 for Scala and is going to be available from 3.3 Spark on Python, but it will process each of the file if we are processing the file in the order when the files were uh, stored on the storage. So this is the only difference which allows to, to scale uh, it better because if you have a multiple dozen of files or hundreds of files, uh, having this trigger, it will process only once, all of them in once, so we can have um, reached some, some limits. And of course, we can have this uh, almost real time, which means like a uh, processing time, so every two seconds we'll execute some some batch. But of course, this is an internal uh, trigger. Uh, it just depends if you want to have this extra external orchestrator for, for that. Uh, and uh, for each batch close, which I will show you on the code base, this is actually the close which allows us that for any new data coming to the platform, we'll just execute a, a, a function. Uh, a procedure, or whatever we, we we are just using, what kind of approach, what kind of language uh, for such set. So we can be like a dozen, hundred millions of data. What kind of a function will execute? In our case, uh, our case, I will show you this Python approach and some function which is responsible to process data through the all the layers from the bronze, silver up to the gold. And of course, the checkpoints, which I will show you in details, mainly. Uh, the structure, which uh, how it looks like uh, on the synapse approach, because synapse approach is going to be quite uh, um, like open. I could say open because it's based on the um, row uh, structure streaming approach, uh, and we can check anything what is what is inside for the um, data bricks is uh, slightly more hidden because they switch the checkpoint location for the rock rocks DB. But nevertheless, the concept is the same. So if you are just um, executing any process, it will store exactly the uh, how many or what kind of uh, files or events has been processed uh, successfully or not. Of course, if it's going to fail in the middle, it's going to uh, execute from that moment and will process it again. So uh, everything is stored under checkpoints so with the most important location. Uh, to just uh, control the progress of each of the process. And this is the, 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 like, uh, the greatest, I could say, benefit of that, uh, because you don't, you don't need to care uh, what kind of uh, files or what kind of events uh, you have already processed. Uh, of course, it's already like, uh, uh, done on your behalf. So you need to only connect and just check the storage. Uh, check any, any other source like an event hub uh, and uh, just process it will just mm, made it for you make it for you uh, about like new files which need to be processed by by your system and implementation mm, so this is like a very similar implementation on both sides uh, for databricks is going to be much easier because uh, databricks uh, was more than half year ago. They open like for public for for open uh, usage. So there is DLT Delta Life Tables implementation, which is nothing else like a um, additional layer of, on top of structure streaming. Uh, which uh, of course it can uh, be in line with the um, uh, standard medallion architecture. Uh, go through the, all the layers. Uh, and upload everything up to the gold, which is like aggregates and already enriched standardized gold layer. Uh, but they did like implement everything, uh, make made this uh, approach much easier. Uh, they in uh, like merge the quality metrics inside allows you to define uh, quickly the rules, how we want to check the data which are flowing through the process. They also added some graphs. Uh, to show the implementation of each of the pipeline. There are some mi minuses of this approach, mm, but it makes like uh, the process much easier to establish and set up uh, nice looking, uh, easy to sell uh, presentation of the, the, the flows, uh, which we can construct in just few lines uh, using uh, any approach. I will show you the approach with the 
of course, Python and uh, standard approach how the, the, they design DLT. For signups, this is, a, this is going to a second step. I will show you like a pure a structure streaming approach. Pure, I mean, that was something which uh, we have built for uh, one of the projects, uh, which signup was, has been chosen as a platform. Of course, signups doesn't have uh, such integration uh, built. There is no such feature. Uh, so in this case, uh, we have built like uh, altogether the implementation of the something like similar like DLT, but using pure streaming approach uh, and integration with the great expectation to use the standard rules to execute any checks uh, regarding data, to store the results on the storage. And also you use, we use uh, Delta Lake as a standard uh, storage type. So everything is, is stored at the end as additional requirements for that the final layer in in gold layer it's uh, in like a slowly changing dimension form but it's rather that uh, the, the customer was uh, quite like uh, focused to uh, have all the changes um, uh, like stored in the history so we are always aware which row has been changed and having delta like of course, it's we are allowed to do the merge, for example, and uh, keep the history of the changes. So always each of the table in the gold layer has the uh, the history of the changes. And I will show you this implementation on uh, during the demo. So with, from the architecture perspective, it's almost similar. Of course, DLT for Databricks, you are using standard features, which are, of course, for additional cost, uh, which uh, Databricks did for us. So it's much easier to start with that. Uh, if you want to use web, the signups, pure streaming approach, of course, there is uh, something we need to do, like build this additional process uh, to just uh, build like this DLT on the signups. Uh, ah, there is like animation, but let me show everything. Uh, some differences, which I just listed here. Of course, there is something which I, I forgot. Database, of course, it's easier to start with because it's uh, much easier to implement. This process is already integrated with quality metrics and so on, but uh, there is extra cost for that. So if you are paying and you need, we need to choose like advanced version of the cluster, there is additional cost for, for an hour, which you need to pay if you want to use this uh, nice looking feature of, uh, of the pipeline. Of signups, of course, there is no additional charge. Uh, there is some limited data risk is purely like uh, combined from the Spark pools. There is option to have like serverless pool because not always we need to have this pool, a Spark pool always up and running. Uh, of course, there was like a, a lot of customer ask for that. I know that for AWS, there is already such option about serverless pool. There is some additional discussion about the public because the, the plane is like a uh, not in uh, pub uh, public net is public network, not in secret network, uh, private network. So there is but this additional discussion on that, but uh, it's quite um, useful to have a approach to just connect and get data from the um, uh, Databricks, but without having Spark pool up and uh, up and running. So that's why they just provide a service pool, but it's not yet available on Azure, this public preview, still preview mode, but it allows us to, to just shut down this cost, this quite uh, uh, costly uh, Spark pools and have something which is much less uh, costly. In, to, in com contracts to the signups, signups by default did this integration between Lake database Spark and Delta. So in this case, we can just simply expose under Lake databases or SQL databases any views or any like uh, objects uh, on the on the uh, serverless pool, so we can just uh, start the cluster, process everything, shut down, and after that we can use this uh, serverless SQL pool uh, to just get the data and just uh, play with the data. Of course, the performance it's uh, no so can be like we are not have all the benefits of having like Parquet or Delta Lake, but nevertheless it's is quite quite not very uh, costly and is quite efficient from this perspective. 
uh, for data topics, there also in terms of if you are going to play with that or if you already play with that, that is about deployment. Uh, even for DLT, they, they made it much, much more difficult. They have coded all these IDs of the pipelines if somebody is familiar with Databricks. Uh, so there is additional effort to just play with the deployment on all environments. Uh, of course, in signups, there is no such restriction. Of course, a part of that, there are other like uh, signups specific of the deployment of these, all these JSON files. So there is another like a, a challenge with that. Uh, nice feature of Databricks that we can directly use repo, files from repo, which allows us to just have like common packages, which we can just simply import uh, doing any other stuff, which is uh, quite beneficial if you want to establish anything which is like common and used in common in multiple notebooks. Uh, so we can just directly have this um, like configuration util utils inside the uh, repo and just import the files and just uh, connect to the repo. In terms of signups, there is no such fun functionality. So still, if uh, we want to deliver something which is uh, common and wants to utilize in all the other nodes, we need to just deliver a will and upload to the Spark. And of course, due to the Databricks is mainly behind of this data lake, it's uh, always, it's always interesting to, to present the latest technology, uh, the latest delivery of data lake. So if uh, somebody is using Delta Lake, uh, there is like 2.1 version available on Databricks on signups. They just like two months ago or three months ago, they just uh, upgraded to 1.2, which is just enough to start with the Delta Lake. It contains a lot of these main features, but of course it will be better to have version two, but what to do if uh, Microsoft is not yet prepared to do this upgrade? Uh, so this like overall my like uh, on like uh, differences main differences which I spotted working on both uh, uh, approaches like signups and databricks, but of course it's much more to be covered, but not during this uh, um, short like one hour meeting. Uh, yeah, demo. So I will switch to the demo, but also on the slide, you have like standards, uh, structure, streaming, programming guide, which I str strongly recommend if uh, somebody wants to start to play with this uh, structure streaming, uh, is the, 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 the link to that. And of course, to Databricks DLT, which is something like very specific, which you can follow if we have like opportunity to work with Databricks and uh, customer is willing to pay for that. Uh, why not? It's, it's much easier to, to deploy uh, like end-to-end -end solution in just you know few weeks. Okay, so let me uh, switch to the demo. Demo, demo. Uh, so I hope that you can see. Mm. First, I will start with the uh, data brick. Uh, so for Databricks, what, what is this uh, demo is going to be about? Uh, so all results of our demo will, uh, uh, will go here to the um, uh, this folder, demo. We have some table to enrich some data, which I will show you how it looks like, uh, because demo files is very simple file. It contains uh, some ID, some vegetables or fruits, with some numbers, like a total. And in this process, we'll just simply, uh, mm, yeah, there is a question, you know, so. Yeah, sorry, uh, if you are sharing something, I can see still the presentation only. I'm not sure how about others. Ah, but... Okay, okay. Yes, good. yes, we see a presentation. Okay, now it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm, okay, so, uh, Let's me show you one more time. So this was I was showing only like a, uh, what is this de de demo going to be about? Uh, so we are going to process simple file having like a, um, a list of some vegetables and uh, fruits with some total numbers. I will just do enrichment of that. Uh, so we'll just switch or oh, add additional language like Italian one, fruits to fruta, if not the proper pronunciation of that. 
uh, and everything is going to be stored on a demo. Uh, so how this notebook uh, looks like. So the, the notebook contains like very specific steps uh, of, because this is all about uh, DLT. Uh, it contains uh, what is the, the, our source path for that and a few others like uh, steps uh, about all the layers and some uh, additional uh, logic for DLT, uh, which is specific here. And it's not the, the only place which you need to like build. And this is like a typical thing we need to consider. This is not like usually to execute a notebook and in other like approaches, like in signups, which I will show you in a minute. Uh, it's also like combination of the workflows of the of the uh, pipeline. Uh, so before I will just uh, go through the this code, which is very simple, uh, I will switch and I will just define the workflow for this notebook because if we if we just execute a notebook from here, you will have the name like such an er error. DLT is not defined is from the reason because uh, on the data rubrics by default you have two type of clusters you have standard cluster which is here and you have delta life cluster and delta life cluster has the whole logic which is responsible for all these nice features uh, which are delivered by dlt so by default if you want to uh, execute anything on the mm, uh, on the dlt we need to just define on the workflows, Delta Life tables. And let me create the pipeline. So first of all, Core Pro Advanced. As I used uh, quali uh, quality metrics, I need to use Advanced. Name it Demo2. And as I'm using repo, as you can see, I can go just do to the repo, which is just check out from our, my branch. And I will choose exactly the notebook which I'm going to describe in a minute. Storage location, which is quite an uh, important one, because if you decide to uh, define it here, it cannot be changed later on. So restriction or not, but need to be very sure. If you want to change something later on, it cannot be changed. Uh, for that, you can, as you can see, I am just already have a mount. I already mount a storage to the database. Uh, so it's quite flexible because I don't need to put it here like a very like a constant name of the storage. I can just utilize a mounting point and then can just switch it uh, later on. And the demo and the schema. Schema means only in this case that what kind of a logical uh, lake database is going to be created and going to be available here. Trigger mode continues. So as I described about the triggers, but of course it's simplified here. We can just continue to do the trigger, which is uh, for every some time, or just triggered. And let me limit max workers. And that's it. As you can see, there is nothing almost more, but only the cost for the uh, CPU, for DPU, which is a combination of how many CPUs, workers, and time. And that's that is all regarding the configuration. And if you want, if you just create, the pipeline, of course, there is nothing here because we need to start the pipeline. And uh, starting the pipeline, if you go here, we know that this is actually the notebook. And we can add more and more notebooks here to build quite complex pipeline. But in this case, we are going to have only, only one. Uh, so let me start the pipeline. So it will take some time. And that at the moment, we can just go to the code and I will show you what is behind of the the, the DLT and the structure streaming approach. So demo notebook. It's not a very complex one. It's, it contains, of course, three layers, uh, bronze, silver, and the gold. I just created like the full to, to simplify and to show the differences. Core part import DLT. This is the specific library which um, contains all the logic is only available on this cluster. So it's only available on this type of a cluster, which are defined on the pipelines, which are defined here. So also is only responsible for uh, available on the clusters. Just only to show you, by default, we have this cluster. This is my cluster, which I created for my purpose. Of course, it doesn't have any, any um, 
DLT. Uh, but of course, we have job computers. You can see this is like generic cluster, which is going to, it's right now uh, scheduled and is being like uh, executed or started. Uh, and is going to be available in around three minutes. Uh, and it's just for, for usage for this pipeline. It's going to be shut down immediately after the pipeline has been processed. Uh, yeah, let me open the notebook. So what we have here, uh, bronze. For the bronze, first of all, we have um, expectation. This is like, um, all my like feeling is like great expectations was just included inside the Databricks, which is nothing like defining of the um, rules, how the field should be uh, tested uh, after the table is created. And here we have standard annotation uh, of the um, DLT. So first of all, we would like to uh, execute these checks. Uh, and uh, we are just uh, doing annotation that this is going to be DLT table, which is going to be named exactly like B, demo, CSV. And what is inside as, as this is a first step, uh, we need to just uh, upload some source. So this is like a, a format which I just uh, uh, use, cloud files, which is nothing else I will show you on the signups approach, which is simply definition of read stream format and on signups it will be like CSV, text, uh, JSON, whatever. This is like cloud files, which is uh, they introduce a solution layer uh, and rest is just the definition that is going to be CSV input file. So where this data is going to be is, is stored. So where I should look for. Uh, and this is exactly I defined that I have this uh, demo files folder. And I'm just adding standard uh, attributes like a file path. So what is a file path of, of that, uh, of the source, uh, when it was modified, and I'm just passing the, uh, the data and creating a table. And what is this uh, medallion architecture here, the, the whole concept, that we are just building a frame. Uh, building a frame based on this, uh, all the files which we just consumed here. So whatever is under this uh, folder, which we defined here, it's going to build like frame uh, from that. And this frame is going to be simply passed to the next layer. So as you can see, there's another like the same uh, annotation, DLT table with additional comment. The table is uh, D, uh, silver, so I mean silver as DMA CSV, and it is going to be read stream, simply read stream of the previous step. Uh, so it's passing the frame, which is uh, going to be created here, to this frame, and is going to add additional logic. Of course, based on this architecture, I'm here. I'm just uh, doing a cast of the to the specific types. Uh, adding primary key or whatever, anything what we would like to uh, create here. And finally, we have the gold uh, uh, to simplify this demo. Uh, for the gold is the same. We are just uh, uh, reading the silver. So we are just uh, reading the order and read table from the bronze, which was is a silver. And it was very simple. I'm just reading uh, in not uh, Spark streaming approach, but simply reading the CSV with the DM and reach uh, text uh, file to simply add this uh, language, Italian language column to translate from the English to Italian uh, name of the area. Uh, and finally, it's it's going to be as a as a gold table. So as you can see, the concept is quite simple. By this additional annotation, we are just defining a step-by-step -step process. Of course, it's not restricted only to the three layers. We can build as many steps we want to, as many transformations wants to put it here. It's not a problem. Here is purely using PySpark, but of course can be used. We can use also SQL, which is quite similar to DBT. Uh, so we also introduce uh, such approach to make even much easier if somebody is familiar with SQL, can be built everything with SQL. But here is just uh, simply using the 
the DLT uh, approach. So uh, let's switch to the workflows. Maybe it's going to already execute it. Yeah, it was executed. So let me go here. As you can see, I process five rows. And the five rows were uh, uploaded to the demo, to the silver, to the gold. Of course, we can check as I defined like few expectations. So quality rules is ordered all all the here that uh, uh, I have um, everything pass, uh, like null values and value total, but it was like uh, cannot be null. Uh, so everything is, is uh, was successful. Uh, so in that case, we have everything passed, nothing has been uh, rejected. So everything is available. And how this looks like from the storage perspective. The demo, as you can see, it's a just came folder like a tables. And under that, you can see simply like a, um, all the folders with the content, which is of course, obviously in Delta format. And you have the checkpoint. Checkpoint is the, the crucial part because it contains, especially about the, the first layer, it contains uh, everything what we already sourced uh, for that. So uh, we have like, a, of course, as I mentioned, this RockDB, it cannot be easily uh, seen, but at least I can show you that inside there is like demo files. This file exactly has been uh, sourced and just written that, uh, of course, we successful offset, but it was successfully uh, uh, uploaded up to the gold layer. And it exactly looks like that. The checkpoint is a crucial part here to just process the data. And if I am going to right now, let me demo files, and me let me upload the uh, new file here. Upload, which simply contains melon with 150 uh, and just to show you that it was not before so we have only a one to five and right now we have like an additional line with that so if you go and if we start one more time uh, it will just consume only new files which were uploaded to the storage which i pointed out on the on the notebook as a source and it will process only this new file. So we don't need to care uh, about the status, pro progress, uh, just uh, confirm that this, this file has been processed successfully. Everything is done uh, in the backend. Uh, so in a, in a second, it should be processed. In same time, not to waste time, I will show you as I defined DemoDB on the pipeline level, uh, you can see that right now we have uh, the tables also created, registered, is done automatically. And if we go here, we can just uh, um, see the, ta the table, the content of the table. In a few seconds, yeah, it should be available. So as you can see, this is exactly the results of the table which we have processed. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, additional, this uh, special function, which allows you to just uh, uh, register the name of the file, which we, we have just processed. So we have the, this file, these values, and the modified data, like daytime, by default, added here to just uh, have the timestamp when this record has been uploaded or modified or whatever happened with this. Uh, and of course, the, in terms of history, because we are on the Delta Lake, we can see that it was should be like initial. Uh, it was already like update created, so DLT setup, update. So I believe if we refresh, because this pipeline should uh, should already finish the second one with uh, one additional row. Yeah, we have the melon here. So that's why in the history you have the uh, information that it was update, initial one uh, with all the details how many rows we should have, have here. I believe it should be just something somewhere here. Uh, five rows. And finally here we have like one rows has been uploaded already here. So everything can be 
easily spotted here. And of course, these tables uh, are available in the standard Delta Lake format. If we go to the workflows, we can see that it was successful. And one row, as expected, has been processed. And this is sort of like the whole thing about about passing the um, uh, everything between uh, layers or between functions using these annotations uh, uh, or Python annotations and uh, we can easily set up such process using simple such simple uh, notebook of course this is a beginning of our way way if you want to have more complex stuff uh, more to come more to, more to develop more to design but uh, it's just like eliminated a lot of things, data bricks of uh, only focusing us from the engineer perspective, only to focus on the transformations. Uh, we have only 15 minutes left, right? Oh, no. uh, so let me switch quickly to the second part because it's going to be um, uh, about the um, uh, signups. So, and, sorry, we, we had a question. Yeah. Yeah, Sebastian. Sure. So just quick question. So what would be the approach if we need to process first file one more time? So should we just change the modification date or we need to upload file with a new name? What yeah, so if you want to process this, it can be two, two scenarios, either to load it with a new name uh, or you can also play with the checkpoint. Uh, not really right now it's possible, I can see on Databricks, of course it's possible on signups, on pure, pure uh, Spark uh, structure streaming approach. In signups I will show that the checkpoint, if you are still having checkpoint as a text format, we can easily even remove the file that it was not processed and process it one more time. So at least two scenarios, new file, new name, uh, or, or just play with the checkpoint. Okay, thank you. Okay, so for for let's uh, go quickly through the uh, second. Is exactly the 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 same scenario. I I have only like different container. Uh, so we have like a, a different folders: bronze, gold, silver. Uh, on the bronze, I have the source demo files. It's exactly the same file. A demo on reach. So we are going to do the same, exactly the same. Uh, and you have the notebook, which is looks quite similar, but not of course exactly like one to one what uh, was on uh, DL on the, the Databricks DLT, because this is like a self-made, I can say, the pro process looking like DLT, but more like. A, let me run it just to to uh, prepare the the Spark pool. Uh, so what, what is this about? This is quite similar approach, but as you can see, I just named it like structure streaming utils, uh, but it was named it slightly different. Uh, it can be software utils also. Uh, stream process. And this is exactly which I, which I mentioned uh, what has been, what was complex. Uh, and for example, building this, this slowly changing dimension, uh, it was built like a site uh, using um, wheel. So sta in standard way, if you want to have everything like something generic available, uh, there is this package approach, and this is simply this util, this wheel has been uploaded as a part of the Spark pool, and it contains uh, some logic which is responsible for uh, delivery of the of the different steps. Uh, so let me show the notebook how it looks like. Uh, I also simplified this just a definition where the, the all the uh, layers should be stored or the tables. Uh, by default, is defined from the common, uh, but common requires key vault, and uh, so I decided to just simplify it, not to have like too complex, uh, too too many dependencies here. Uh, so it's like I'm defining the source path, bronze path, silver path, and also quality path, because the same way um, uh, the quality checks were defined here. And the transformation, as you can see, it looks very similar. Of course, without annotation, uh, there is bronze transformation, silver transformation, and which is doing exactly the same. 
but without uh, any of this uh, specific like file name or modified name is already covered by this uh, our like will silver and finally the gold transformation which is doing the same is doing a join is sourcing the demo enrich table and returning the the results quality rules looks very similar so that's why i mentioned i'm pretty sure that databricks also um, managed so they merged the great expectation approach because what, what i built here is very similar it's also like uh, i just divided like mandatory and optional um, quality checks uh, finally to check exactly the uh, based on this 200 almost rules which i were available from great expectation it is delivered here uh, so we're just executing such a rule after silver layer to just mark and just check what what is there and there is this stream process a stream process is something which i imported on the beginning uh, of my process stream process and i believe it's uh, going to be ex executed uh, so this is responsible to uh, to deliver and do this step by step passing of the data frame exactly the same way uh, and how it looks like because mm, i also prepared the the mm, sample without wheel but of course it requires uh, to have all the functions as a cells which doesn't looks nice of course this, the notebook should be focused only on the uh, specific transformation which data engineer should look should uh, looks for and just define and not on this contact uh, concept which is like generic because this is about the store and execute great expectation uh, rules this is about saving layers and this is the concept exactly this is a part this is the heart of the uh, structure streaming approach because this is exactly like uh, connecting to this uh, slide which i shown you in the beginning uh, this is the whole concept um, about what Databricks did in DLT and uh, I repeated the same case on Synapse. Uh, what we are defining here, first of all, we are defining what we want to like to source. So in our case, we are just doing read stream CSV. It can be JSON, can be event count, can be XML, whatever you would like to have uh, with additional column. And what we have here, uh, we are just executing a uh, structure streaming with trigger one, so we micro batch. Pro we are providing where the checkpoint should be stored. And for each batch, so I mean for each of the files which we just uh, initiate or identified and sourced, so for each of the set of files which we built a frame, we are executing uh, such function and doing a mark start that's that's all and what we are going to do on the right table it's just up to us and in this case i just repeat like the same similar medallion architecture so it's like a bronze i'm executing simple bronze transformation what i'm defining for the source which i have just uh, read i'm just defining silver transformation executing greg expression checks on silver so as you can see the same concept bronze bronze is passed to the silver silver is passed to the gold uh, so very simple approach but allows uh, us to be quite flexible to build proper transformation within each of the layer and finally write all the layers so save the all the layers so i'm doing at the end so only up to all the transformation are successful are only writing the layers of course using standard delta format of course this is the not very nice way of uh, processing the data or building or everything because everything what is a uh, um, complex uh, what is uh, like we can repeat in the notebook was already included in this wheel so as you can see this is just finished uh, it's the information that it's already like source five rows. These two rules has been executed to just uh, check the quality of the data. And finally, it was uh, some data, same five rows, of course, it was written to the gold. 
And uh, at the end, I have like very simple style to just uh, load the layer. So as you can see on the gold layer, we have exactly the same result, the same records with the same file path, but we don't need to uh, define it here because by default is done in the wheel, like standard additional um, uh, columns. Yeah, and there is a language also, Italian language here. So it's also on that reach on the gold layer because I'm just uh, passing uh, or showing the gold layer. If you want to see, for example, um, uh, quality path. Uh, so we can just simply, because this is the result of the correct expectation is also quite uh, um, uh, generic because the result of each of the rule can be different. Uh, so that is also stored as a JSON format. So as you can see here, we have like the results that we have five uh, elements has been tested uh, based on the rule, which is like a, uh, values to be unique. Of course, it were unique. Uh, if it were not unique, of course, we can raise an issue, can even stop the, the whole process. Uh, so let me back. But what more important, what happened on the storage side? Uh, so if you go here to the lake, uh, what happened on the bronze, which is the most important thing? The checkpoint has been created. As you can see, checkpoint demo, because everything was uh, in the notebook, just to show you. It was data set demo, so everything is driven by the data set. What happened here? We have the similar, as you can see, very similar structure with Databricks because Databricks is, is based on the structure streaming. Uh, and we have also sources, but as I'm storing everything as a plain text, you can go here and just see what we just written, uh, written, or written to the to the all the layers, but what was our source. So we, uh, the process exactly discovered this file. And uh, by that, we just process everything. So we have Delta table here, demo, we have, uh, of course, gold, delta table, demo here, the same the, uh, delta lake table, and of course, the silver. Each of the, the table, it contains some different uh, values, but it's exactly the same. And if we are going right now to uh, go to the bronze source, and uh, we'll just upload, I will upload exactly the same, and reach file two, upload, and I will just execute, of course, I don't need to execute the whole notebook. It just executes stream process one more time. It will discover, it should discover, it's going to discover, of course, uh, the new file, which uh, were just uploaded to the system. And uh, we can see the, uh, should we, we should see like uh, uh, six records with this melon position for 150 uh, and everything what I'm just uh, using is under this software of structure streaming utils, uh, the config, which is just responsible to deliver something from the um, uh, key vault and load process, which is nothing else, very simple, few procedures, uh, which uh, are responsible to uh, integrate with great expectation, integrate different uh, sources like JSON, CSV, and finally implementation of this slowly changing dimension. So as you can see, there is a, all these functions which are exposed as a standard and a notebook are just stored inside this uh, one of the package about the load process. And finally, we have the gold. As I mentioned for the gold on the, the project perspective, it was the, the, the reason to just keep it everything uh, with the history. So right now we have the standard merge approach uh, Python approach to merge the data and using this is current and valid from valid to uh, columns uh, to make a user possible to just uh, drill down to the history to just uh, execute or to know exactly what uh, kind of records has been changed by who and when. Uh, so exactly the whole logic is just written to just simplify our process. Uh, but finally, here we have like one record, as you can see, has been processed. So if you go here, 
we'll see exactly the six records with this additional melon position here. Uh, and this is already like with the form of the like slowly changing dimension, but it's not like a valid one because we can it can be applied on all the tables. Uh, and what is the most beneficial of, of the approach of the delta egg? Because first of all, we have structure streaming, so the, um, we don't need to worry about any like uh, executing or progress. If something is going to fail, it will execute exactly the same files which were not processed yet. Uh, but what is more interesting? Let me upload the third file, which is only valid here because uh, we had I have this method. So the I just uploaded one more file, which melon should be updated to 999 in total. So let me run the process one more time. Of course, it should. In this the time, we can uh, go to the bronze checkpoints, of course, to see what is going on here. That is quite uh, simple and quite transparent. So we can see the second, my micro batch, just consume the file too. And the third one, it just consume file free. So, uh, and that was, if we want to like uh, process it one more time, of course, having text format, we can just simply remove the file from this text file and that's it. And you will repeat uh, uh, this file one more time or change, change the name. Okay, let me go here. Uh, Writing gold, so in a minute I should see uh, the result. And this is a benefit of having Delta Lake, of course, behind of that. It's not like mandatory, we can still be on the parquet base or any other format, but like combination of the of Mary of both Delta Lake and spa structure streaming, it allows us to build quite flexible solution. To, to reach or to cover all the requirements uh, because the requirements still are quite quite common uh, to have the, the updates and it's not very possible of having purely parquet without like any additional extra operation on top of that. So as you can see, Melon is already contains um, the change, even with batch, batch is an extra additional um, ID which is coming with any of the uh, part of the uh, micro batch. But what is more, more important, because I as you can see, I just use is current flag equal to one to just get the latest ro rows. But here we have the implementation of these uh, changes. So this is exactly showing that uh, it was, this record has been valid between this period and this record is uh, uh, currently uh, current because it was the latest change, which we changed the value from 150 to 999. That's, that's I believe, all um, in terms of uh, uh, both approaches. Uh, of course, this one, pure one, can be also de uh, developed on the Databricks. Uh, because Databricks was like a short idea if we can do it uh, without having Databricks on, on, on other like platform. And it's possible, of course, we're spending more time to establish such will, to build everything. But having that, even right now, is very simple. Uh, for on the demo, on our sandbox platform, I just potted, I just deployed these utils and just prepared the demo. And it was working without any issues. So there is no, no, a uh, lot of changes to, to apply the same pattern to any of the, of the project. So, then a question, I, I know that we are run out of time, I also need to go to the review session, so, but there may be some question for that. Okay, it seems we uh, don't have any questions, but Mm. Sebastian, I want to uh, thank you uh, for your great performance. It was really interesting to listen to you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining our event. Uh, hoping to see you on our next event. And uh, wishing everyone a great day ahead. Just just a small question. Um, yes, yes. Those SSUTils of yours, uh, Sebastian, yeah, because the, you, mm -hmm. you're an author of this are you sharing it on some internal 
uh, repository for SoftServe employees or? I uh, believe it could, could, it or... could be could be shared because it's uh, something which uh, I need to maybe polish it a little bit. And yeah, some... please don't do not polish because it is not. I think it's not required. It's just I mean, I mean, of course you can, but it's just you know to see the the in, just the, the yeah yeah definitely behind. definitely can be shared. I can just uh, take a look on that and share, yeah. share in some kind of yeah. a repository. Definitely yeah, yeah. can be can be. It's not nothing nothing private nothing special for any of the project is. Uh, it's quite generic. Yeah, so that would be that would be nice just to see. <clears throat> yeah, and thanks for the presentation. Thank you. So, any other questions? No. Sebastian, one more time. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.